Hello again, witches, seekers, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and wand waving. I'm your host, Paige, and together we're going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, the natural world, and most importantly, intuition. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode 68, Clear Knowing, all about the powers of psychic intuition. Now, before we begin, (laughs) I'm sure you can hear that I'm a little under the weather and we're in the throes of a pandemic, but I am fine. It's a sore throat and gunked up lungs (laughs) from spending a lot of time around cigarette smokers the last couple of weeks, like just, just a lot of time, like every other day. And I've been indoors where someone is smoking and my chronic bronchitis don't like that. So it's nothing serious, I promise. Uh, So today we're going to talk about claircognizance. Now I'm sure you've all heard of clairvoyance, which is the psychic ability to see things others can't, or to receive spiritual messages as images or by sight. There are other psychic abilities under this clair umbrella, like clairaudience, which is psychic hearing, clairsentience, which is psychic feeling, and clairalience and gustus, which are psychic smelling and tasting, which is super fun, right? Those are the those are the fun ones because they're not they're not outrageously common. But then we have claircognizance, which is psychic intuition, the method of experiencing psychic phenomena or receiving spiritual message, involves a sudden and unshakable knowing, like you just know it. A claircognizant person will suddenly know the answer to a problem. They'll just know they have to turn right here, even though the directions say to go straight. They just know when someone is lying. And they know it like they own know their own name. It's not a guess. <laughs> it's a clear fact that you can't disbelieve because everything in you is saying, this is it. This is it. Despite the fact that this is probably one of the most common psychic abilities, it's one we really talk about and that can even be pushed aside or considered, you know, n- not very important, kind of minor. Now, full disclosure, the reason I don't like that <laughs> is because I have very strong psychic intuition. I experience some of those other psychic senses as well, but often in a way, you know, it's just more clear that it's coming from my gut than my eyes or my nose or whatever. So intuition is a word that means all different things to all different people. The definition technically is a thing that one knows or considers likely from instinctive feeling rather than conscious reasoning. And I love this definition because it it kind of hits all of the marks. Instinct, feeling, and the unconscious. Intuition is something that all humans have. We all have intuition, just like we all have instinct. Anyone can have a strong gut feeling that is correct. Our instincts keep us safe. They allow us to find food, to find people, to make families with. And, you know, they're just all of the knowledge that human beings have been learning through our evolutionary process and that has been stored in our whatever our brains or our DNA or something. (laughs) A scientist would be much better to explore real human and animal instinct. Animals, of course, have strong instincts, strong intuition. And it's for many animals is stronger than their, you know, their cognitive reasoning. So a rabbit doesn't sit and think about whether or not that coyote approaching is going to attack. It just runs and it escapes. The coyote knows when it's time to stop chasing that rabbit because the odds of finding food easier a little bit, you know, somewhere else, leaving this rabbit now, those odds are very high. But he doesn't think it through. He just he just does it. He just knows it. Sidebar. <laughs> I have this theory that people with very strong psychic intuition are almost all like animal people, like people who, who really love animals and, and get along with animals a lot. I am, of course. Um, and every time I meet someone who is psychic in, in kind of the same way that I am, you know, they have pets and I can see them talking to, you know, the squirrels and the birds in their neighborhood when they're walking home. I'd have to find some proof to back up that theory. But my theory is that because they both understand instinct and intuition a little bit, they get along. That's what I think. Anyway, we all have intuition and instinct. We all have a fight or flight or freeze response in times of danger. Some people are naturally more in tune with theirs, with their intuition, and some people's cross over into psychic territory. And I'll be explaining my own experiences with that a little bit later. 
The next part of the definition is feeling, and this is an important one. There's a difference between knowing what someone is feeling and feeling what someone is feeling, and this is an important distinction. If a friend walks up and you have this sudden pain in your heart, you know, you feel like something is piercing you right in the heart, and then your friend tells you that their relationship has ended and they're heartbroken, this is clairsentience or psychic feeling. A psychic intuitive, on the other hand, would just know that the relationship had ended or that this friend has experienced a romantic heartbreak with no hints or cues. Suddenly, in their brain or in their gut, they just know it. Now, if you feel that pain in your heart after your friend exposes their deep, sad emotions to you, what you're experiencing there is just true, beautiful, pure human empathy. Psychic empathy is something I struggle with, so I'm not going to go into it a lot. But honestly, empathy doesn't have to be psychic to be a beautiful gift. Just hug your fucking friend. That's what I'm going to say about that. And now here's where our unconscious part comes in. There's rarely any observable reason for this information to suddenly be available to a psychic intuitive. I've gotten to the point where I've identified a few things that are more likely to trigger the gift, but it's never enough to explain how I know what I know. Never. I also will wake up in the middle of the night with a solution or idea that is totally wild or out of character, but it will just be exactly what I need, and I will know that this is it. Since exploring dreams more, what episode was that? Episode 45, Dream Magic and Can of Witches. Uh, I also realized something very neat or different about my dreams. I don't see or hear what I'm dreaming. I just know it's happening. It's like I'm, it's like I'm reading or writing a story in my head. You know, I don't hear my voice. I don't see any scenes. I don't hear noises. I just know the next part of the story. And afterwards, you know, the story's still in there. My daydreams work kind of the same. Lately, it it reminds me a lot of what happens when I'm reading. You know, when I'm reading a story in a book, I'm processing the words on the page and I can go very quickly because I, I know what all those words mean. So as soon as I see it, you know, and it just builds together. And when I'm dreaming, it's like that, except there are no words. It's just, I just know it. Now, that isn't, that isn't psychic per se. That is just the way my brain works, right? more and more people are starting to realize that their brains uh, experience and process information very differently. Some people do not have an inner voice, which is like wild to me. My inner voice never shuts up. Never. Now, I don't hear it. You know, I just know it's talking and I know what it's saying. But like, damn, girl, shut up for five minutes. It's never quiet. (laughs) Other people have moments when their mind is in rest and like kind of blank. And oh man, that that just sounds lovely. Like when they're not actively thinking, there's just, there's a moment of silence and rest. And that just sounds awesome. Many people do not see anything, kind of like me. They don't see anything when they visualize or daydream. They can't see anything, you know, psychically or just when they close their eyes. So they kind of have to go through other senses and gauge the reactions and analyze what happens, you know, doing that through meditation and things. Still others see very different things. They can see music as colors or as shapes, which is super, super cool, right? That is a whole, that is a whole other super interesting thing. And I think that as we learn more about this kind of, you know, processing in the brain, more of us will actually be able to recognize psychic senses and abilities as well. And we'll have better tools to to grow them and to understand them. So to recap, everyone has intuition, which is tied to our natural instincts. But some people also possess psychic intuition, also known as claircognizance. This is a sudden, very clear sensation of knowing something with no logical explanation for why you know it. So let's have a little fun and talk about some possible situations where you might have been using your psychic intuition and not even know, and some ways that I receive messages. So there's there's a few universal examples before we get to the ones that are specific to me, right? <laughs> so some universal examples of a clear cognitive moment. 
is you suddenly know something without any logical way for you to have gotten that information. Or you know who's calling before the phone rings? That one's super fun. You can tell if a place or a person should be avoided before you get there. Now that might be, you know, you arrive at a place and you get this gut feeling, oh no, I shouldn't go inside. Or it could be hours earlier, days earlier. You get this sensation that tells you this needs to be avoided. You often find yourself going in a direction or walking somewhere that you didn't plan to go for reasons that you can't explain. I find myself wandering a lot. I, I love to walk and I end up wandering and I end up in places where I end up finding things that are so peculiar. <laughs> they explain something I had been thinking about or wrestling with earlier or I see symbols that are not super common to see in, you know, a regular neighborhood that just happen to be in these places that I'm walking to for no reason that I can explain and where I don't normally walk. Interesting. Many psychic intuitives are human lie detectors, but there's no, you know, pulse checking or face reading. It's not like the mentalist, which is also very cool. Like <laughs> reading people that way, super very cool. But it's not like that. It's just a very clear, oh, you're lying. Like, I just know that. I know that you're lying, just like I know that, you know, my shirt is blue. This, of course, comes with the inevitable frustration of not being able to prove it. And then no one believing you. Uh, for my other great mythology nerds out there, I jokingly call this the Cassandra problem with psychic intuition. Cassandra was a, a figure in Greek mythology. She was cursed with this incredible psychic ability. Now, I believe it was clairvoyance, but it was the power to know the future. But the curse was that she would never be able to convince anyone that what she had seen was true. And she <laughs> she foretold the sinking of, of the city and no one would believe her. It's a fun story. Super upbeat. Uh, another one is knowing when what someone is going to say before they say it, especially when it's a brand new topic. This is really fun and spooky. You know exactly when someone's going to change the subject and what to. How could you possibly know that? They only found out about half a second ago. This is one that happens to me, but it also happens to me with songs on the radio. Either I can tell you what song is coming up next, or I know the words to a song I've never heard before. As long as I sing along. I couldn't sit there and be like, here are the lyrics to this song I've never heard. Let me write them out. I'm singing along and... I know the chorus before we get there. We're still in the verse and I've got the chorus already and I've never heard it before. That one's always fun. <laughs> um, for that one in general, I, I've personally noticed that speaking out loud triggers my psychic intuition. Speaking and, and singing out loud. Um, you guys in this show have heard me have like earth shattering realizations many times in the middle of a sentence or paragraph. And sometimes you didn't even know it. Other times I think it was pretty obvious. Uh, but sometimes you didn't know. In those cases, I've always, it, you know, it's a moment where I've gone off script and the sentence just flies out of my mouth without, you know, stopping in my brain for me to register what it, what is even going to come out of my mouth. And the second I say it, I get that very clear feeling. This is true. Experiencing other psychic phenomena or getting psychic messages that are not considered claircognizance usually through the psychic intuition is also interesting because again, it's very different. Ghosts are a really fun example from my life. Um, I don't see ghosts. Sometimes I hear ghosts, but nothing really solid, never even like whole words, right? But I can tell that ghosts are there. After a while, I can even start to tell you a few things about the ghosts. The longer I consider the ghosts, the longer I focus on it. I could tell you little bits like it's a man, it's someone in middle age, it's someone who's short, it's a woman who smokes cigars. That one was specific and a little bit interesting. <laughs> um, and, and I have no way to check this out, but I do go see uh, a psychic medium. She does my tarot readings and I see her about twice a year or once a year, usually because I'm broke. Um, and I've actually set aside a quick minute at the end of my readings and been like, so, hey, there's a ghost in my house, I think. And she'll laugh like, of course, there's a ghost in your house. I live in a very old house and I'm here. So <laughs> ghosts find that. Um, 
you know, so I'll specify, oh, he's a man about this age range and I get the impression he's someone I don't know, but he's not scary. And she'll just like, she'll let me know the details or confirm something or say like, no, you, that's not, that's not there. I don't see anything like that. Um, and she'll let me know if it's something that I need to try to explore more, learn more about, or just, you know, <laughs> there's ghosts passing through everywhere, right? They got to get places. It happens. Uh, this also explains my ghost experiences as a kid. I always knew when there was a ghost and I could tell you random bits of info about that ghost. But as soon as someone asked me to describe what they looked like or sounded like, I had nothing. I didn't see them. I didn't hear them. And I really believed that I was making it up. And I'm sure some of it was imaginary. Kids are incredibly psychic, but they're also incredibly imaginative. But Knowing myself now and knowing now how that psychic sense works for me, it's likely that some of those experiences were very real. I just didn't know how to explain them. Another kind of psychic thing that you read a little bit differently when you are working through your intuition is reading auras. Now, I can read some auras. It's something I'm still learning but I can read people's auras. The thing is, I don't see a damn thing. I do not see a color. <laughs> I don't see anything around them. I will just know what someone's aura color is. Sometimes it'll just pop into my head. They won't even be saying anything. They'll be completely silent and I'll just get it. It's not even something I can really control. You know, I can't really force it. I can't do it on command. I'll just be talking to someone and then all of a sudden it'll be green. And nothing else, just green is it in my brain. My brain just goes, nope, green, green. And it doesn't matter what I'm trying to say or hear. That's what I'm getting. I didn't really know what the heck was up with that. I just, I'm a very colorful person. I thought I liked colors, right? I'm just, everybody likes colors. Everybody's got a favorite color. Half true. Uh, but I, I have met two aura readers. One was clairvoyant and one was intuitive. They came up with the exact same color months apart. And I hadn't paid for services. I had randomly met these people. Like, <laughs> like it's, I wasn't wearing the color. It wasn't a color I was known for wearing at the time. It was wild. There was a slight difference, though. They both specified uh, a very bright royal blue for the overall aura color. But the clairvoyant also saw patches of purple around like over my head and orange around kind of the left side of my torso going up and down there. And just remember that because that's, that's going to blow your mind in a minute when we talk about chakras. Um, but this royal blue is the one they both, they both knew of. And, and these were months apart, right? These people didn't know each other. Now the first was the intuitive. She said, I, I don't know what it means. I don't know anything else. She's like, I just know that it's blue. And she's like, hold on, let me find you an example. And she grabbed a big, like a, the seven day candles that you can pull out of the glass, the big royal blue one. She's like, it's that color. And I wear that color a lot more now. Like <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. Um, oh my God, I'm wearing it right now. That's so funny. And the clairvoyant a few months later said the same colors is the main thing. Neither of them really understood their gift. It wasn't something that they used all the time. It was just something that happened. And of course, when I looked it up, you know, blue, <laughs> it all just sounded real perfect. Blew my mind just a little bit. Um, and after that, you know, I started to think about all of those color impressions I get from people. And I was like, you know, <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm getting a psychic feeling here. So that's something I'm still learning about. But if, if that's ever happened to you, what you're no doubt, no doubt doing is reading their aura. Claire cognizance are also very in tune with the, you know, the forces of synchronicity. So things like omens and signs, astrology, and seeing connections between things that others can't. For me, this is something that has gotten stronger and stronger ever since I started trying to discover and enhance my own psychic abilities. I think this is why astrology, you know, suddenly just kind of clicked and made so much sense. Even though I'd been confused about it for years, I, I was more in tune with this kind of energy. I was more used to looking for signs and symbols, for noticing signs and symbols and noticing how you know, noticing patterns and noticing connections. 
Um, synchronicity is fun. <laughs> this one's really fun, actually, um, because this is one that has started to happen in my life in ways other people notice. So you can ask a lot of my non-witch friends, but things around me will literally start to sync up. So music and video playing on different devices in different rooms, you know, one on an iPod, one on a DVD, they will sync up every single time. <laughs> every time. Uh, everything around me syncs up to something. It's it's odd. It's it's like those Disney movies, you know, where a song is building and everything in the room is either playing an instrument or is an instrument. And it all just starts building together and it becomes all part of a song, right? The sounds of the cars passing, birds out the window, something buzzing in the other room or the fridge making a weird sound, neighbor's phone ringing outside. Like it's all, <laughs> I know exactly. You. I, I'm sure you can no matter how you visualize things, I'm sure you you can visualize exactly a scene like that. For some reason, the song that's kind of playing in my head with this is, oh, what is it? It's, it's a Creedence, Creedence Clearwater Revival song. I think it's looking out my back door, maybe down on the corner, but it's just, you know, there's a lot of different instruments that build up. <laughs> oh, oh my, you can really tell that I'm sick. Sorry about that. Um... <laughs> I've always noticed it, but now other people do. And it's it's pretty funny. People are like, how does this happen? Are you doing this? And I'm like, it just happens. I'm sorry. Um, and this kind of like, this kind of rhythm, uh, I move a little bit like Neo in the Matrix, you know, not quite as cool. I'm not, I'm not so flexible, but I can bob and I can weave through a moving crowd like nobody else. Like I'm far too big to move this smoothly, but it's just because I know exactly where the path is. I just kind of like, move in a flow. Uh, and that's just something that I've kind of always been able to do, but it's getting stronger and stronger and more noticeable to other people as I go along. Now, the difficult thing with synchronicity and noticing patterns and connections that others don't is that people don't believe you or it doesn't make sense to them. You know, my own reasoning often doesn't make sense to anyone when it comes to these very psychic impressions. No one else can see how these five unrelated things all go together and why they mean what they mean to me. But to me, it's like, how can you not see it? Like, it's clear as day. I, It's as plain as the nose on my face. You know, it's one of those situations. It used to be very frustrating, <laughs> but I've accepted now that uh, I just have to find a different way to explain it. They're not going to get it if I explain it in a way that it would make sense to me. So this is how tarot reading works for me. The most, uh, the most psychic part of the process is when the cards are still face down and I'm selecting the ones to pull. I'm on autopilot. This one, this one, and this one. Can't tell you why those ones. It's just those ones. Often... I can tell you at least half the cards that will come up in the spread, if not fully predict all of them as I flip them over. Happens so much. I often will pull the cards and I'm like, oh man, I just know that the tower is in here and I'm sure it's right at the beginning. And of course it is. Again, that's something that happens, that is happening more and more. And the reason that happens is because it, the cards themselves aren't giving me the information that I there share in the reading. The cards are allowing me to present the information that I'm getting. The images and the words on the cards and in the tarot books do help trigger more small little information downloads, you know, <laughs> and the feedback that I get on some of these details that I can't explain, but can't ignore. So I make sure to include them in the reading. You know, it, it, it is gives me a little bit of a rush because it's, it's wild. Um, I've gotten very used to, even if I'm not sure about something, I put it in the reading and I send it in just because you never know. And those points that I wasn't sure of always end up being something that was very, very important for me to not leave out, but it, there's no way I could have known it. So I'm always also very grateful because I'm able to focus on something very important. What if soldiers in the United States Army were actually witches? 
Well, in Motherland Fort Salem, that's exactly the way it is. In a witch army, the women are the ones with the power. Motherland Fort Salem is the new original TV series on Freeform from the creator of Claws and executive producers of Succession. Over 300 years ago, witches made a deal to end their persecution. In exchange for their freedom, they would become the country's front line of defense. Motherland Fort Salem takes place in modern-day America. Follow three new cadets as they turn their immense power into weapons, from basic training to learning how to bring the full fury and destruction of an actual tornado against the enemy. And there is one hell of an enemy. A chilling terrorist group known as the Spree have begun to tear the country and the world apart. And these women are our only hope. They were born witches. They will be made warriors. Motherland Fort Salem premieres Wednesday, March 18th on Freeform. We talk a lot about mental health here on the show, and I guess more specifically, the barriers that I came up against when I was seeking out treatment for my mental illness. I've also been very fortunate to share the strides that I've made since then and the support that I was able to find. Sharing that with you showed me just how important it is to be able to talk about what you're going through and to get support from someone or many someones who care. That's why I'm proud to have BetterHelp as one of the sponsors of the show. BetterHelp is an online service that can connect you with real licensed therapists who can be available to talk on your schedule and right where you are. They have four different ways to communicate, text, chat, phone, and video calls. And there are professionals with a wide range of specialties. So there's a really good chance that you can find someone who's perfect for you all without having to leave home. Everything's confidential. If you ever feel like your counselor is just not the right fit for you, you can switch right away. There's no charge. This service is very affordable compared to in-person therapy, and they even offer financial aid for those who need it. It's okay to need help sometimes. You deserve to get better, and you can start that journey at betterhelp.com slash fatfeministwitch to save 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash fatfeministwitch. Wild magic grew out of a fascination for herbalism, a love of witchcraft, and a passion for creating natural, chemical-free products that honor our bodies and the earth. All items are handmade by Clarissa Camp with you and Mother Earth in mind. Made with love, purpose, and a sprinkle of magic, we craft intentional products for mindful witches who have a profound relationship with the planet. Our ritual bath salts and sprays are crafted with herbal and mineral ingredients to support your magical intentions, cleanse your sacred space, provide protective barriers, or just bring a beautiful chemical-free scent to your body or your home. So visit our website to learn more and check out our herbal-infused body butters, lip balms, and healing salves, because right now listeners of the Fat Feminist Witch podcast can get 20% off by going to thewildmagic.com slash fatfeministwitch and entering promo code FATFEMWITCH20 at checkout. So before we continue, I just want to add a little something to that Wild Magic ad. I am beyond impressed with the products that Clarissa sent me. So she sent me, she didn't have to do this, but she sent me a little box of stuff to try out. So she sent me a jar of the Manifest bath salts that had this beautiful like two inch piece of quartz crystal like a point amazing smells fantastic she sent me two sprays one is cleanse which is sage palo santo and juniper and gratitude which is like oh my god it's my favorite it's patchouli jasmine and grapefruit and then she sent over a body butter Oh my God. And it, you know, it was a sample size. It's called Nourish Body Butter. And all I can read on the label here is calendula and marshmallow root. But I'm likewise very, very much loving it. So she sent me products to try out. So I just wanted to say, I love them. I tried the bath salts and I thought they were fantastic. And they really did help me get some stuff done, you know, manifest some shit. The sprays are my absolute favorite. The cleanse spray I've been using all over my house, you know, with some negative energy going around and I use that and the gratitude spray I have found myself using every single day like I spray it on myself spray it on the in the air around me it is exactly 
the kind of smells I like. It is a foresty, deep, dark, but lively, magical smell. And everything that she sent me has this same kind of vibe, which is exactly how I like to smell. So thank you so much, Clarissa. And uh, I, I really do hope you guys check out Wild Magic at thewildmagic.com. Like any other psychic ability, trying to explain exactly where this information is coming from to anyone can be a really big challenge, more so than with some others. You know, I could see a big blue bird that we need to find to avoid a disaster in my mind. This has a chance of making sense to somebody, at least you've heard of this, right? But I know we need to hang a left and then take a detour this minute, though I don't know why and I can't tell you. Oh, weird. Look, we're passing the Bluebird gas station. Maybe we should stop. Only to find out that it's the only gas station and way too many miles because the one on the main road broke down and we'd have run out of gas if we didn't stop. You had no, no idea why. You don't know why you had to turn. You don't know a whole picture a lot of the time you know a piece. And this isn't easy with any other psychic gift, of course. It's just a, a little bit more difficult because the person driving just might not believe you. And you, you have no way to really describe how you know what you know. So when you say hang a left for no reason, even though we'd then be lost or off the map and they don't turn left, well, it, too bad. <laughs> it's the end of that. Likewise, trying to do a reading for somebody and explain the information that I'm getting without tarot cards to show them is incredibly difficult because it becomes, but how would you know? But how do you know? But how do you know? And I get it. it it's hard for us to, <laughs> to just take things at face value sometimes, especially things like psychic information that we can't verify. So I get it, but it is difficult. So the information itself can come from any number of sources, like spirit guides or ancestors, the collective unconscious, other people, the Akashic records, angel, I mean, who knows, right? It could come from any number of spiritual sources. But it does all come through the same place, and that's the crown chakra. The crown chakra is at the very top of your head, and is often portrayed as, you know, a nice bright violet purple. It's an entirely non-physical chakra that's connected to spirituality and also, you know, the different facets of your mind, your conscious and unconscious mind, your dreams, your daydreams. This is the chakra through which we all pull in spiritual energy, all of us, which is then used and interpreted by all of our other chakras. When it comes to psychic intuition, the information comes into us through the crown pops into our heads. Often we let it out and end up interrupting people and being the absolute worst. It's a compulsion. Um, <laughs> but without the other chakras, we might not know we just got a little info download or we might not be able to use that information at all. We, it might just sit there and go completely unused. The sacral chakra, which is represented by bright orange, is the seat of everyone's human intuition. This is where we get our gut feelings, the pit of our stomach. If your sacral chakra is not working properly, you may not get these hunches and gut feelings. It's like the alarm system for your psychic intuition is shut off. This is also a very emotional chakra that we often use to connect with other people. And connecting with the energy of other people helps you recognize information that's about them. Sidebar. Remember what the clairvoyant saw in my aura? <laughs> Blue everywhere with purple up top and orange on my side here. It's the crown and the sacral chakra. Before I even knew anything about this stuff, it was like two years later that I, I really realized what was going on in my aura that day. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> it's little things like that, right? <laughs> Uh, so then we have our solar plexus, which is obviously, you know, a nice bright yellow, which is your confidence and optimism. And this one's important. The biggest hurdle for anyone trying to work with intuition is trusting it. Trusting the hunches, trusting the information, trusting that you're right, and not letting others convince you otherwise. This is all the domain of the solar plexus. Confidence and trust are very difficult, even when you're just trying to trust yourself. 
This is something that requires practice and devotion because it may always be a struggle. Always. We all go through periods where we're very sure of ourselves and periods where we have no idea what we're doing. And this can really affect how much we can, you know, pay attention to our psychic intuition, how much we can interpret it and how much of it we can use. Then we have the third eye, which is indigo or royal blue. And this one is usually tied to clairvoyance for obvious reasons. But with some things, I feel like my third eye is, is doing a lot. Synchronicity, all of that is a real example of my, my third eye working <laughs> in overtime. Um, figuring out patterns and connections and puzzles, that feels like a very third eye activity to me. And I find great success in all divination and psychic work and dreams when I meditate on opening the third eye up along with my crown. They, I feel they work in tandem. So there are a few ways to keep your chakras working and balanced, or even to activate them uh, in certain moments when, when you need them. The first is obviously meditation. Any meditation is good for your crown, especially. But using meditative techniques to open and connect with all of these other chakras mentioned is also important. I like to imagine each one as flowers opening up, you know, like real flowers. All except the crown, which is, you know, it's a lotus or like a water lily. But it, it always, I don't know, it's like it's made of glass or even amethyst because it's purple. It's like a glass flower opening up. I can't quite describe it. <laughs> um, now, crystals are my personal favorite tool when it comes to growing psychic abilities. And I have some crystals that I work with more or even exclusively to support claircognizance. Crystals of the feldspar variety, those are your moonstones, your labradorite, and your galaxyite, are my favorite crystals for any of this work. To me, they just, you know, they are the ether or the cosmos, you know, the night sky. Moonstone and labradorite are the full and new moon, respectively, while galaxyite is the field of stars that they share. These stones connect to certain chakras, but, but to me, they also connect chakras to each other and have them working together toward a common goal. Moonstone resonates with both your crown and your sacral chakras. So this really heightens the flow of information and your ability to feel it in your gut. Labradorite opens the third eye while also connecting to your root chakra to help you stay grounded, which is just important in any sort of psychic work. It's also very protective so it, it's psychic protection. It, it protects from negative entities or spirits or anything that might uh, distract you or block you or hurt you. Finally, galaxyite opens up your crown, opens it up real wide, and connects you directly to the ether, the Akashic Records, the spiritual energy. And it heals and strengthens your aura to keep all of these chakras, all of this energy running together great, right? And like I said, all three of those, uh, they're all the same kind of variety of, of stone, of crystal, of mineral, but they all look and feel and work so differently. It's very interesting. So to work with my solar plexus and to help me trust the information I'm receiving, my favorite is Atlantisite which is a very weird looking stone. And it, it may be kind of hard to find um, or a little bit pricey. Mine was a little bit pricey, um, but it's, it's a really wild looking stone. I had to go for it, right? It's this like lime green serpentine with these spots of dark purple stitch tight. So it's like lime green with blobs of purple. Oh my God, if they weren't my favorite colors, I mean, I'd think it was hideous and I love hideous things. So naturally I love it. This is a very, very cool stone. It's a very happy and confident crystal that opens up your solar plexus and helps you trust yourself and your psychic impression. The purple part of the stone connects to your crown chakra and opens you up to ancient wisdom, spirits, and ancestors. 
it helps you problem solve, remain emotionally balanced, and it blocks irrational fears or doubts from blocking your intuition. Some people say, you know, I don't, I don't know the difference between feeling afraid or feeling anxiety and feeling an intuitive nudge. But if it's really fear-based, if it really, really scares you and you don't know why, there are times that could be your anxiety. You have to learn to distinguish between the two. And that will be different for everybody. I find Atlantisite is one that help, helped me learn to distinguish between the two. I find it to be a stone of like strength of character and holding firm in your beliefs as well. So it helps when you need to convince others that you know what you're talking about. It solves the Cassandra problem of psychic intuition. Finally, we have green prenite, which is uh, like a grossly underrated stone. I think it's very pretty. It's a very pale, almost minty green. Looks almost like you could see through it, but it's, it's definitely opaque. Um, and in a lot of shops, it's just kind of downplayed, you know? Oh, yeah, it's a happy heart chakra stone. It's very good luck. But that that's not all of it at all. This is another stone. Yes, it resonates with your heart chakra, but it's another solar plexus stone that can help you feel more confident and trusting in your hunches and nudges and can help you connect with spiritual energy. Both prenite and atlantisite also help you keep from feeling burnt out or overextended while reading because they both, you know, bring in life force energy through your solar plexus. Where they differ, differ is that Atlantisite connects you to ancient wisdom, while Prenite prepares you for the future. This stone can help you receive and interpret messages earlier. You know, maybe you'll actually pay attention on the first nudge and trust it versus the fifth or maybe the tenth nudge. Then it can help you be prepared for the future. It helps you figure out what to do with the information. Prenite really puts the pre in precognition is what I say. <coughs> okay let's do this intuitive witches you're meditating you've got your crystals your chakras are all aligned and just crushing it and it's time to practice your claircognizance and for this you will need a super special tool a comfortable pen <laughs> that's half of a joke but straight up like what do i use paper mate ink joy ballpoint ultra smooth ink like i'm i'm addicted and when i use other pens i can't write for nearly as long and i'm like oh, oh, if i had my pen i could do this so get yourself a good pen is what i'm saying also grab one of the eight million really cool witchy blank journals that you keep buying and don't deny you have them because we all do writing has been one of my best friends in the study and practice of this psychic ability I mean, not only is writing down all these inklings and experiences so you can check it out later, a super smart idea, which I honestly don't do enough, but writing itself can trigger your psychic intuition. There is a method, I guess you could say, of mediumship or speaking to ghosts and spirits called automatic writing. This is writing that is channeled from a spirit or from a spiritual being. It's often done in meditation or, or full-on trance and comes out in a voice or with words that the person channeling doesn't know or use. It's, it's out of character. Some mediums can channel in other languages that they do not speak or understand, uh, which is so, so cool. So that is automatic writing. There is also a very similar non-spiritual, psychological or writing exercise uh, known as stream of consciousness writing, where you sit down and you write out anything that comes to mind. You know, your consciousness, it's a stream and you just let it all out. You allow your mind to drift, you write and you write until you feel finished. Very therapeutic, wonderful, honestly. Now, in the middle of those two things, you have intuitive writing. You tap into your intuition, you ask a question, and you start writing. Now, it takes practice before you're able to write, you know, less than whatever, like five pages with one tiny message somewhere in the middle. If your brain is anything like mine anyways, it never shuts up. 
But you will find yourself coming up with answers that seem out of character or that you never thought of or they're just just brilliant, right? It's the cool stuff. You find connections and patterns in the messages and the words you're getting and you pick up on nudges and thoughts and just write them out. When I write something and I get that this is very true and you need to pay attention sensation, I write it in real big and I underline it. (laughs) In other parts, you know, my letters become these loops and swirls that are all connected. They're just this big blob that you can barely read. But then a sentence will come out crisp and clean. It's all still in my handwriting, but suddenly I slowed down and took extra care, but not on purpose, without meaning to, without realizing that I do it. I can also do this on a computer, so if you can't handwrite, that's totally okay. Um, And again, you'll see a million spelling mistakes and red lines, and then a very perfect and clear sentence right there. One minute I'm laying on the backspace and everything's garbage and then all of a sudden I know exactly what I want to write and I need to get it out before it's gone. It's moving and I need to catch it. I'll suddenly change topics in the middle of a paragraph or even a sentence. I'll talk about something completely different and then just pick back up where I had left off before. Looking back over it, I'll think, gosh, where the hell did that come from? I don't even remember doing that. The trick with intuitive writing is to let go. And not control what's coming out or how it sounds. Just let it out. I also like asking myself important questions before bed. And then when I wake up, it's like I spent all night thinking of it and I have an answer. Yes, sleep on it. I love that. (laughs) Yeah, that's an awesome way to not have to work super hard. So this is something else I learned about dreaming in the last year. I don't necessarily recall all of my dreams. But I know when I've gotten a message in a dream... And I know most of the time what it means. How weird is that? I can remember bits and pieces of the dream that are incredibly pertinent, but otherwise, I don't recall a thing. And I never saw the dream. I never heard the dream. I just know it happened. Very weird. It's hard to explain, but I think it's neat. I think it's neat. I think this all sounds super rad. I mean, all, all psychic abilities sound really, really cool. Sound very, very interesting. And I'm, I'm biased here, but I personally think the psychic intuition is awesome. So I, why isn't it something that we talk about and teach about when we talk about other psychic gifts? Why, for some people, is it even considered not psychic at all, but just human instinct? Where's the respect for all the Claire Cog witches, am I right? <laughs> now, there's a few reasons for this. The most obvious being that it's super, super hard to explain. It's very hard to explain. It's super hard to even recognize in yourself. It's hard for others to trust it, and it's hard for you to trust it. Them's the breaks. It takes practice, and it takes, you know, trial and error. It takes standing up for what you believe and saying exactly what you mean. The other reason and you guys are gonna love it, is misogyny. Yay, it's our old friend. Um, But seriously, when someone says intuition, or talks about an intuitive person, most of us instantly assume they're talking about a woman. You know, it's women's intuition. Women just know. A wife just knows. A mother just knows. She knows when you're lying. She knows she's right. She knows you fucked up. Intuition is seen as inherently feminine. It's aligned with the moon and the element of water. It's considered soft and solitary and the power of the goddess. To trust and understand intuition takes emotions and creativity and the type of cognitive processing that's just associated more with women. Pay attention to the psychics who discount intuition and claircognizance. Are they male presenting? Are they kind of (laughs) old? In my experience, almost always, despite the fact that it comes through the same wide open super spiritual crown chakra as any other psychic message, it's considered something that appears entirely in our uterus, I guess. (laughs) In researching for this episode, I read, you know, I, I read a whole bunch of books and I read quite a few old books, classics. Many written by male authors who are, you know, they're cool otherwise. But they all had this similar perspective on intuition and its place in kind of the psychic realm. Meanwhile, books written from a modern or a woman's perspective 
often devote quite a bit more time to working specifically with intuition and clear cognizance. One book I liked, and I believe I've reviewed it before because I've had it for a few years now, is Develop Your ESP by Nina Ashby, um, which I reread last week and I found super helpful for explaining psychic intuition and for developing it. It also doesn't feminize it, you know, any more so than any of the other types of psychic uh, abilities, which is important. So listen, men, boys, and anyone else who maybe feels like they can't be intuitive because they are not feminine enough. Listen to me. Are you listening? It's bullshit. It's bullshit. You have just as much ability to connect with these chakras, to connect to your emotions, to connect to different parts of your instincts as anybody else does. Men have intuition. And oh my God, some men just have outrageously good intuition. Let me tell you, I've, I've met them. But those men, I mean, sometimes they're completely unaware, which is really, really neat. Or they are men that are not super invested in a macho version of masculinity, or they're not so super tied to the gender binary. They are men and male presenting people that don't feel threatened by possessing a quality that's normally deemed feminine. And for you folks and fellas, I would put extra effort into working with Moonstone, which can help you deal with some of that kind of internalized mis misogyny that's just a part of our society. And it can help you connect to your your psychic power and that intuition that you have in there. Thank you so much, witches, for tuning in to today's episode of the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast. I do hope you found it both fun and enlightening. My hope is that many of you will realize, hey, <laughs> she is describing me. And that you've been hella psychic this whole time. And it'll change your life. <laughs> Maybe. But even if you just come away from this, understanding more about your mind or your abilities or your own personal power, then I consider it a roaring success. Want to learn more about me and the show? Visit thefatfeministwitch.com where you can find links to all of my projects, episodes, writings, and updates, as well as social channels to get in touch and share some witchery. Now, of course, all of you listeners are the, the roots, the backbone of the show. But the podcast wouldn't be possible without those who are able to support it financially, which they do either by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee button on my website, through Patreon at patreon.com slash the Fat Feminist Witch, or my wonderful advertisers, which you can find out more about at advertisecast.com slash the Fat Feminist Witch. So thank you to, to all of you who are able to support the show in that way. Happy Friday the 13th, witches. I hope you get lucky. It is Venus's day after all. 